All right, let's go ahead now. Gerald's going to record this. Um, a lot of traders can't make it. So um, good evening. Hey, Phil, Steve, Larry, Thomas, Derek. Hey, Sal. So um, hey, by the way, Sal, great job today. Awesome job trading in the room today. So uh, nice work. All right, so let's get uh, rolling uh, here. Uh, um, uh, the algo update is coming out to you guys with the um, uh, automated arrows and with the algorithm attached to that. Um, so um, I anticipate uh, getting everything wrapped up uh, by the end of next week and sending that out to Gerald and he's going to wrap it and get that out to you guys. So um, um, as far as that goes, we should be good to go. Gerald, are you in the background? One second. I think Gerald just got knocked out. One second off. I think Gerald got knocked out. Gerald, are you back in now? One second. I want to make sure we're recording this. Hold on one sec, guys. Okay, I just got to throw Gerald. He's recording now. So let's go over this. Um, like I said, the, uh, um, we will record this, and it will be sent out to you guys so you're good to go. Um, so the program you guys are going to be getting um, has the updated. Uh, you already have the program, all these charts anyway. Um, the new feature is obviously the automated arrows that automatically fire at big inflection points. Um, for FZR trades and momentum trades and tweezer trades. Um, it's firing at all three levels, so all three setups, and um, that's going to be added, uh, that is added, and that's what you guys will be getting on a new update. So uh, when I get over to Gerald, uh, you should be probably towards the middle of next week to end of next week, and then uh, please do not hammer him about when's it coming, when's it coming, it'll be in his hands. I'll let you guys know when it's in his hands, and then he will uh, take his time and wrap as fast as he can and get all the members who lease the program already. Um, you will be getting that out, okay? So <clears throat> let's go over to uh, today. Um, just a beautiful day with the, uh, with the system. Um, they call it a lot of uh, major inflection points today. Uh, this is a chart I want to start out with because I think sometimes we tend to forget um, that uh, this chart shows when major momentum is coming in the market. And it's simply this. When you get six uh, uh, dots that are green or six dots that are red on our momentum chart, remember, these workspaces are already set up. So you should have this chart already set up for you on your own, uh, on your own workspace. So when you get the first six green that came up at uh, – 150, we had news at 130 today. So 150, we had six green dots, or that's three zones. Here's my uh, deep zone, intermediate zone, and shallow zone. As long as the market stays above the shallow and the intermediate, we know the market is super strong, and these retracements, we're looking for an FCR or a Momo trade. So as long as we are staying above the two zones, we're looking for an FCR and Momo setups. As long as we are above the shallow and intermediate zones. All right. So that's key right there is that as long as we're staying above the intermediate zone, the market's trending. Right, we are in a trending. If you get six green or six red, it's trending hard down six red or six green. 
then we're in a possible big vertical movement. Now, how can we time our trades in? So that is key. And this is what the algo looks for. This is definitely key right here. So don't forget that. We want to stay above their strength as long as we stay above the intermediate and shallow zones, meaning it needs to stay above these four lines, this bottom line. It's got to stay above that bottom line. If it goes below that bottom line, your Momo and FZR trades are no longer valid. Then you're looking for a V bottom at the outer edge for a market imbalance. And I'll show you how you can do that with a market imbalance today. I'm going to show you how to set a chart up. So if we violate these two zones, my shallow, which are these two lines, and my intermediate, which you have on your own charts, if you violate that, then we're looking, the market is weakened, we're looking for a V, v bottom or V top. And then if it ever breaks this, we're looking for a trend change, we should turn red zones and we're going to start shorting the market then. So once you turn green, you're going to look for these opposite color speed bars to come in. Now this is very important. When these come in, this first red came up, it gave you a big heads up that the market has potential for a big reversal going in the direction of trend. So six green came in suggesting there's speed in the market. This opposite color speed bar that came in on our five Simrico that you have already set up on your workspaces for all markets, that told us it's right at the edge of the shallow retracement. That's exactly where you want the FZR to fire inside of the zone. So and I'm going to go to the chart in a minute and show you where these automated arrows fire. So this is where you want the automated arrow to fire right here when this red bar, red box appears. The second one, here's your most high, uh, highest probability trade. It happened about 10 minutes after that. You had a red speed box at the shallow retracement. This is the thing. If you are not closing outside of the shallow zone, the market is extremely powerful to that side of the push. Meaning if I come here and I get inside my zone and I form a speed bar, there's an order imbalance right here. An order imbalance for reversal. If I get an arrow that prints, which I'll show you it did here, it did here, it did here, and it did here on an FZR in Momos, if they print and you are outside of the shallow zone or at it or just inside of it, meaning you're not at this middle zone, you have a powerful punch ahead of you. Look for a big wave up on a first wave up, a wave three, a wave five, Elliot, and it should market should continue. You are still strong if you come down and touch the intermediate zone and you get these red bars at print and you get an error on a Momo or a FZR, the market is still extremely strong. Look for the buy. We got an arrow there, same here, look for the buy. The market only weakens when it gets in between this area. The market has now weakened if it starts closing in this dead zone. I call it the no trade zone or dead zone. If it comes down in here, what the market likes to do, if it's super strong all day, it will typically just come down into that zone, V bottom if it's buying, and then just shoot straight up after a buy and bounce. I'm going to show you how you can use a buy and bounce to catch these on a separate chart. If you ever break this zone, this outer zone, the market has stopped trending. And if it ever breaks that zone, then you're looking for a trend change and price usually comes down. It retraces back up right into that zone again. And then you start a trend change and we start doing stair step, stepping down for FZR and Momo cells. All right. So then you're going to look for if it ever breaks that zone, you're going to look for stair steps the other direction to the downside. All right, so that's the far left chart. It's, it's very important you understand this chart because if these are the most important FZRs that come up and the Momos because you have an imbalance. Imbalances causes reversals. An imbalance at key zone levels. 
And is if you keep it simple, if you just get a, a buy signal above the intermediate zone or the shallow zone, then you look for major possible moves to the upside. So let's just take a look at the first one, and I'm going to move on. I'll get into the algorithm in a second. So if we look then, and we start moving along here, and we look at the first one at 1351. This is the S&P, the ES. At 1351, what did I say today? Okay, here's another thing. Let's pull this chart up again because you're getting this with the new update also. You're getting these updated trend lines, which are supply demand lines. I said this morning, I, I skinnied this down, and I told traders in the morning, I said, listen, I said, if we get outside of this 51 level, or if we get outside of this 40, 4,375, the market has no supply above me, and it has no demand below me. Here. So what you want to do is this another chart you must be familiar with, and this is going to be with the update too on the supply demands. You should skinny this chart down every morning, and depending on what market you trade, where you trade the Dow you know, NASDAQ, whatever you, skinny it down and look at these levels. And I determined at 8.30 this morning that if we got outside of this level, there's no supply above us. I said the market could possibly explode to 41.50. And it got cranking all the way into the close and got as high as almost 4,100. All right. And what happened was on the way up, look at what happened. FZR arrow fired, Momo fired. FZR, uh, FZR, 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 Momo, Momo, Momo. Look at the algorithm absolutely on fire on the way up, right? Because we look for two trades in, right? What we do is we look for an FZR. What an FZR is, it's categorized as coming down into my green zone. Now, my green zone that I have in the room is this zone right here. It's this middle zone right here. It's this middle zone right there because that's the most important zone, right? Because if it breaks that, the market could have a trend change. So right here is your most important zone right there. That's called your middle or intermediate zone, right? So we, we need to understand that. So that's your most important zone on the way up. So that's the zone that I show on my, my favorite chart, my 12020. This is a 12020. Or this is 125.25 because I put it on the NASDAQ. But the ES I show 120.20. This is actually showing a 125.25, which is fine. But the 120.20 I show in the room. But the, the, the FZR is here, right? You have a, why is it FZR? You have a full retracement down below 20 before the arrow fires. All right? So what you want to see then is you want to see an order imbalance right at that FZR. You want to see an order imbalance. You want to see red coming into that on our other chart. Then the market starts moving. My favorite combo is an FCR into what's called a MOMO. A MOMO is where price is coming out of the zone, the intermediate zone. And when price is coming out of the intermediate zone, I'm looking for a momentum trade. And that is a momentum trade. Both of these are because look at the oscillator. If the oscillator does not get below 20 and the arrow fires, you know you're in momentum up. You don't have to touch the zone on momentum trades. You actually want to be away from the zone on momentum trades because if you're away from the zone on momentum trades, it's showing that there's momentum to the upside. And this is a Momo. All three of these are Momos right here. Momo, arrow that fired, and this, this will work on your update. On your update, you, you guys are going to be getting all these arrows will fire automatically. There is a Momo trade there. It will fire. There's an FZR that it fired live today, and it fired live right there. So there's your Momo, and then we keep rolling. Oh, that's into the close. So we go backwards. It got down to the zone, so this is an FZR. So you see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to 
I'm trying to find order imbalances at key Momo or uh, at key Momo or FZR full zone retracements. So if you look at those two charts, they're a match made in heaven because one will show you where the zone is, the intermediate zone, right? So if I look at this chart and I scan this down, one will show you the key levels of the zone, right? Here's your zones all the way down. Right, here's a Momo, Momo, FZR, Momo, FZR, FZR. So what you want to see then is you want to see you want to see an order imbalance right here on this chart. So I want to see the market get six red or six green and get moving up, right? And I want to see the order imbalance to know and with their arrows fired right afterwards. Arrows fired right afterwards. Arrows fired right afterwards, arrows fired right afterwards. So as you move along, you can see that the order imbalances were here. And every single time the arrow fired, it had this accompanied with it. Every one of the FCRs of the Momo trades that worked out had an order imbalance. All of them. Right? And here's one that caught the trend change. I'm going to go over in a second. That was an FCR in the trend change that caught that big giant move up. So if you're skinning this down then, so we went from order imbalances, right? Let's get this out of the way. We went from six green at one. Here we go. So right here, we went six green at 1.50 in the afternoon. At that time, your order imbalances were here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then wait. Right when red goes over top green is what's called a consolidation. This is a consolidation period. I was talking to Sal. Type If you want to go back in the room, scroll back at uh, 2.30 and watch me, Sal, typing back and forth. I said, listen, this market cannot go higher because there's overhead supply. Once that supply is broken out of, we want to look for an FCR Momo trades right away because the market's in a bull flag and we should explode into the close. And I was dead on on my analysis because what it did it had overhead supply red over green it broke above the supply and then it just exploded with an FCR 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 Momo FCR and I'll show you in a second so I had one two three four five six seven eight nine ten trades into the close all with order imbalances to the upside so what you want to see then is this. What I told Sal, and you go back on the chat and look if you'd like, when we were coming into this, when that first red bar formed, I said, hey, momentum has dissipated right here. Longs are no longer valid off of FZR Momo trades. From here to here, no longs are valid. Right, Sal? You and I talked about this. And what did we say, Sal? We said, hey, once it breaks out, we should see a continuation to the upside, right? So this consol this is called a consolidation period. So this is how you got to read this chart. <clears throat> so it started out with green, all green, showing showing that there's major buy imbalances coming. There's your buy imbalance, buy imbalance, buy imbalance, buy. Once red over top gets over top green, what do you do? It tells you the market is in a consolidation period. Now, I like to see this when this happens. I like to see it sort of form sort of like a wedge. It starts wedging down, and you can see it. You can see we're wedging down. You can see the zones are wedging down, and it really just formed a triangle before the breakout. But then it just broke out, right? It broke out here. It had a retracement, and this is where it caught. At 1455, look what fired on your zone at 1455 1455 there's your zone 
Oops, let's get to your longer time frame. Where, where is it? This is the shorter one, which I want to show you in a second. This is your longer time frame at 1455. Look at your FCR that fired. Right. Yes, right there. So look at the FCR that fired in the zone. There it is. There's your breakout. It broke out of this wedge. Look at the FCR that fired. Look at price accelerate. It went from 41 and three quarters on the first push up all the way to 73. Why? Because there's no longer overhead supply, right? So you can use this chart over here to see when supply comes in. So if we're in an uptrend and red starts coming in, lay off longs. Wait for the breakout of supply and then get right back into the FCRs. And then you can see that it never broke what? It never broke the outer zone. So what do you do? You keep taking FCR trades and Momo trades. As long as you don't break this outer zone when you're running, as long as we don't break that outer zone, then the trend is up. Right? That's the key. All right? So that's a very important chart. I just want to go over that with you today because this chart is very, very important to understand. Because it, we have it on the workspace because it lets you know when there's buy and sell imbalances. And that's key for you to know. Because when there's buy and sell imbalances and you get an FCR a Momo trade over here on our main chart. Remember, this is our main chart. This is a 120-20. I have a 125-25 because of the NASDAQ futures I had on here a second ago. But it's the 120-20 on the S&P. This is where a buy imbalance, buy imbalance, buy imbalance, buy imbalance, so on, okay? So, and it doesn't matter what market you look at. If I go to the NQ, it's the same exact setup. It doesn't matter what market futures, crypto, currency, it's the same exact rhythm. You're going to get in the same rhythm. It's going to be either an F, a momentum trade here, or it's going to be an FZR here. Now, this is something I want to go over because, Sal, you caught three for three on these today. Congratulations, by the way. Sal caught three of these trades, tweezers, tweezer arrows. And what a tweezer arrow Momo is, is this, is if you get two dojis that form and you get an arrow that fires automatically and we're above extreme, above 80, you have a powerful push to the upside. This is called an extreme tweezer Momo. This is called an extreme tweezer Momo. This is an FZR. So the ones that Sal took, you can actually go in the smaller time frames and look at these. So what? So how Sal set this up was we. you want the FZR to form first. Let's go back to the ES real quick. And we'll look at this push, on, push up on the FZR. So we got outside supply. We got above uh, the supply line looking for a breakout. And you get the FZR that came in, and the FZR fires, right? So the FZR, we fired here. Here's an FZR that fired right there at 1,500. So once you get an FZR, if you want to try to capture a Momo off the smaller time frame, this is where you want to look for the sweet spot to look for tweezer trades. Coming outside of the arrow, arrow fired on an FZR full zone retracement, you want tweezers a, a fire in here. And here's what happened. So we came outside of an FCR and look at the tweezers that fall. So here's the FCR that fired on the 20. This is the 12020. Then look at the I don't like the 11313 unless it's for Momo trades. I love it for Momo trades. I do not look for FCR trades on this small time frame. To me, it's worthless. But for for FCR trades. Because I the full zone retracements can be caught off the larger time frame. But after the larger time frame confirms, these are beautiful for Momo trades. Look how the double doge, the double doge formed here. You're above 80, so there's extreme Momo above 80. So that's a great time to enter the trade with a small stop because it's a small time frame, a 113.13 Unirico. Next one comes here. Next one comes here. These are not small trades. This is a high of this bar is 40, 
look at that move. The high potential is 74. So we're talking over 30 S&P points. There's that one. These are called tweezer momos. The best ones you can get if you are extreme momo, meaning you're above 80 after coming out of FCR. So here's where the 20 fired, the larger time frame fired in the zone. Right there, fired in the zone, and it got an arrow here. Start moving up. That's where you look for it. Now, the easy way to project if a momo is going to happen, I have these, this extra moving average on here. Here's your 20, here's your 50, there's your 150. I need the 20 to be crossed up through the 50 to have a Momo trade, no matter what. The 20's got to be above the 50, the 50's got to be above the 150 for a tweezer Momo. If not, I don't like the trades. All three worked. Sal, congratulations on getting all three of those trades. All right, so that's, that's how, you, how you can use a smaller time frame. I don't like the small time frame by itself with Momo trades. I mean, uh, FCR trades. I like this guy right here. This, this guy right here is enough for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine opportunities in the afternoon. Ten right here. And the beauty of this trade, always skinny your supply demand lines down when you come in the room on your own, on, on your own computers. Skinny it down. Find out where your gaps are. I know if I break 39.51, this market could fall straight apart. And I told traders that this morning. And I told traders if we get above 40.003, look for Momo trades and FCR trades, we have unlimited move prior to 41.50. Because look, there's no supply. What these lines do, they represent order flow of previous price action. There's supply demand. That's what supply demand is. It is just previous supply support and resistance. So if you look at this resistance right here, support and resistance, it comes all the way back of this huge consolidation of price three days ago. That's where that demand line was, supply line was generated right there. So it calculated all the way back on the 28th, two days ago, that today, if it breaks out, Look for Momo and FCRs and get ready because this market could explode. Now let's take it a step further. So we know supply and demand is important on FCR Momo breakouts because you get a nice continuation of speed. If you get market profile with you on the side of your demand and supply lines, and I said this today, I said it three times, I said if we're above HVA and that supply line, it's going to turn into a demand line, and there's unlimited upside to around 4150, right? There's nothing in front of us. We had price profile here, which is a natural target at 73, 74, but we had our next target at 4103. I got a weekly target at 4150, where it looks like we're going on the weekly chart. So when you see those supply demand lines, what you should do when you get into the room every morning, you should just get this chart down. And you will have this on the update on this chart, on the 120.20. I, your supply demand lines are different than the ones I'm putting on the 120.20. These are really in tune with breakouts. All right? So that's going to have it on the 120.20 on your update also. All right? You're going to know when the market's possibly breaking out. So that's very, very important that we understand that before I get into the algorithm here in a second. But let's just remember, we're only looking for two setups. We're looking for an FCR trades and looking for Momo trades. That's it. Nothing else. No other trades. FCR trades, Momo trades. FCR trades, Momo trades. Now, let's take it a step further. I put this down here, this box at the bottom of this, uh, this little order imbalance. And you can set this up if you want to. So we know over here it's very simple. It's very, very simple. I want to stay above my shallow and intermediate zones. I want six red, six green, indicating the market is possibly going to explode. And I want to look for these opposite color speed bars, right? We all know how to do that. We want to stay above these two zones. The best, if it stops at the shallow, the market should explode. If it gets down in this no trade zone, it tells you we could probably come down to V bottom, pop out of there, but it may just go up a little bit, roll right back over, 
and then we're looking for a trend change and a new direction. How can I get these buys and sells like this? In other words, how can I get tops like these and sell tops like this on an outer zone? How can I get this outer zone top where it just sells off like crazy like that? Or how can I get this top, you know, um, find another outer zone top? How can I get these outer zone tops where it just crumbles apart, right? Or down here, get this big V bottom. How can I do that before a trend change? You can look for order imbalances on setting a chart up this way. Now, when I was in the room today with, with, with Sal and I was talking, and I said, if we get, this is a sweet spot of no supply. So I set this chart up. This is a chart I set up. I set up a Unirico 1120, and I put it on the bottom of the 12020. So this is only to look for order imbalances. Okay? So I set this up down here. So this is my 12020 that is on our workspace. It's already set up for you on our workspace. So 12020, that's 125. I'll switch it to 12020. So that's our 12020. And I set up a chart to show imbalances down here. And I set this up as a 1120, not a 12020, but a 1120. And then when I and go 10 days back, I simply go over here, I right click on my momentum chart, I come down and save as template, save it, I put in speed bar confirmation, save it, and I go and I set up a 1120, and then I insert it, go into it, templates, load, insert. We'll have this on the, all the new workspaces we sent out also. It'll look just like this. But if you want to do it on your own, just insert it. And the key is this. I love this because what happens is if I get major tops or bottoms on a V top or V bottom, right, or if I'm looking for order imbalances, what happens is I can find out when the market can possibly explode to the next level. So Sal and I was looking at the market when it's consolidating here. We're in a major uptrend. We had this chart showing that I had red overhead supply. Once you get outside of the outer zone, look for FCR and Momo trades right there. Look for it to explode, price to explode to the upside. Once I get outside of here, look for it to explode. Once I get outside of here, the sweet spot, because we're in an uptrend, look for it to explode. All right, so I put this chart down here to help traders out, also to look for supply demand. So if I'm coming up to, if I'm coming down to V bottom or V top, let's say I'm at a V bottom or V top, find one on outer zone. Well, here's the intermediate zone. You'll want to see the color of the bar and the direction of the move. So if I'm coming down to the intermediate zone, an arrow fires here. It just gives you confirmation that there's an order imbalance with the arrow. If you want confirmation of the arrows, you can use this chart as confirmation. I leave it down there. And I explain how to use this in the room, but it's just it's another way you can get confirmation of an order imbalance on these arrows. Right? If you don't want to use this chart, you don't need to at all. The arrows will fire automatically for you. Right there. I like using it as an order confirmation of an, uh, of order flow and when it could possibly explode to the next level. I don't, I want, if I'm buying, if I'm buying these retracements into the zone, right, if I'm buying here, then I want all green above me, right? I don't want to see red until it clears it. Then look for a, a FZR retracement, FZR retracement. I'm going to look for FZR retracements here when it clear, clears red and Momo trades, right? I want to clear these, these levels. This is where major supply came in at 220 to 250. I said, just wait until it breaks out again. This is the direction we knew. As soon as it broke out, it accelerated. It accelerated hard. I'm talking fast. At, 50, at 3 o'clock, that's when they start coming back in the market. And you could tell because at 3 o'clock, look where all the Momos came in at. There's where it accelerated, right here. And it was very fast, right, Sal? As soon as it broke out, because what it was doing, this is the supply right here. 
it couldn't get through the supply. So what was happening was these Momo trades and these FCR trades were pausing, right, Sal? They're pausing. I told Sal, just sit. Don't get involved with these Momos and FZRs because we're, we got overhead supply hitting. Supply, supply. As soon as it broke out of supply, right there, the market accelerated, came down, and just pushed. So you could use this chart and this chart to find out where overhead supply and demand is. So not only, not only can you use it for pullback buys when a, a major reversal is happening with an opposite color speed bar, I like it when red is over top green or green's over top red and I clear supply demand line and I got nothing above me, right? So you got everything going for you. You're above market profile, you're above your supply demand lines, and then you broke out. So that's just another way that you can, you can qualify these arrows. Now, I get this all the time. They say, well, Jay, um, can I just take the arrow? Yes. You just take the arrow by itself, right? If you want to understand about supply demand, when the market's possibly going vertical hard, then put this chart up. It's a 1, 120, and just use the same indicators that I use on the workspaces I provide. This, this is already provided for you. You already have this chart already on your workspaces, right? I love when it breaks out. If you're in an uptrend and you have red that comes on top, it's awesome because it's squeezing. The market's squeezing. It's forming a symmetrical wedge. It's getting tighter. Tight, 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 tight. Breakout, retest, uh, imbalance, buy imbalance, FZR. This is where my arrow fired on my zone and explodes. All right, so that's what I have. I have this little chart down here at the bottom. Like I said, I will make that in a workspace for you. We'll send the update out for you. And I'm going to put it right down to the bottom end of the right. It's the same thing as this chart up here, but they're going to form different levels, meaning th this supply told me right here, this red, it told me the market was pausing. Don't get excited about from, from 1420 to 3 o'clock. So for 40 minutes, 1420 right here to 3 o'clock, don't get excited about FCRs. 1420 right here, right before 3 o'clock, right there. That told you don't get excited about this FC, FCRs. Why? There's red supply over top of an uptrend. How cool is that, knowing how to read that? It's a neat little way how to know about price action. So then I already cleared. Then once I cleared it, look for that first retracement, and it's a neat way how you can avoid taking arrows because you got overhead supply. Now the auto trade, what it will do, what it will do, it will, it'll, it'll take all these trades, I'll show you. It'll take all these um, for, with the, uh, if there's red or green on top, it doesn't matter. It's going to take all these trades with a stop, which I'll show you in a second. But when you're doing this manually, if you got red supply over top of you, right, right here, and you're in a hard uptrend, it's a squeeze for a resumption of trend. And guess what? If this red continued down and we close below the outer zone, what's going to happen? Do you really want to take longs in, yes or no? Do you want to take longs in if you close outside the outer zone, if that red just kept going down and pushed price below the outer zone? Do we want to take longs in? No shorts we want to then look for retracement fzrs and shorts immediately all right so when you see red over top green it's an indication of pause in price and the market's typically consolidating for a squeeze play to the upside and i'm glad that some of you were in here I'm glad sal i walked you through all of it today i'm glad you did well today but you can see how important it is you really need to warm up to this chart all right, you really need to warm up to this. All right, so you can find out by taking the arrows based upon the squeeze. Now, lose what you can do if you are trading. Here's the thing if you're trading off of a 120 20 chart, all right, 
and, it, and this is what you traders have to understand. If you're using a, a 12020 chart, a Rico bar, a 12020, that means your stop has to be at least the size of that Rico bar plus three ticks. So if you strictly trade off this longer time frame, you've got to have a 23 tick stop or you're going to get stopped out on all these arrows. Why? Because once the arrow forms, right, Luz, and this may be what you don't understand, I don't know what's happening to you. Once this arrow forms, that's the high of this bar. That's where you'll get filled. Well, the high of this bar to low of this bar is 20, right? It's a 120, 20. That means there's 20 ticks in between the high and the low. Well, if you're going to have two ticks below the swing low, you're going to have at least three ticks below that. So your stop's going to be 23 if you trade off that chart. Now, does it matter with the 23 tick stop off of uh, micros? No. If you're trading micros, it's perfect, right? If you trade off micros, it's perfect. But if you just have a normal stop of 15, 16 ticks, at 13, 12 ticks, you're going to get stopped every, out every single time on an arrow, every single time. Because you're tra if you're just trading off of a 120-20, then you're going to get stopped out. Now, if you trade off a 113-13, you're like, well, I don't want to trade off the 120-20. I want to trade off the 113-13. That's fine. You can just trade off the 113.13, but make sure you understand you only want to take the Momo trades off the 113.13. And then there's a distance of 13 ticks. So if this is the 113.13, this would be the fill, the high of the bar would be here. The low of the bar would be here. You give yourself a couple ticks, you're around a 15, 16 tick stop, which is nothing if you trade the micros, right? But that's all relevant, okay? Yes. So if your ES is 15 ticks, you can't trade off of the 120-20 by itself then, lose because you're not giving the Rinko, this Rinko is designed to move 20 ticks. You'll have to trade, you have to let this set up on the 120-20 and trade off of the 13, right? Yes, you have to adjust to it, but that's why, that is what, that's what you're doing though, if that makes sense. And if you're doing the micros, that's not a big stop at all, okay? But you understand why you're getting stopped out then? Your stop's too small according to the Rinko bar size. Because these arrows all worked out pretty much all afternoon. They were on fire. And if you're getting stopped out in this type of market, then you need to adjust your stop. Okay, good. All right. So that being said, um, I'm going to leave this at the bottom of the chart. This will show. Listen, I want, I want and want and want the outer edge to be broken. If, if the market's in an uptrend, right, and you're going like this, and you're going, you're stair-stepping up, and uh, uh, we've got green ATRs, green zones all the way up, you want to break out of this outer edge zone. You're begging for it to break out. You're pleading for it to break out with trend because you just broke supply. Because what happened is when Sal and I was talking, I said, Sal, it's got to break this outer level 45 and three quarters, right? It's got to break here. What happened? It came up and gave a sell zone. I mean, it gave a, a, a power, I mean, it gave, a, um, it gave an order of balance sell. Well, rejected. Came down, order balance buy. They started bringing it up. And as soon as it broke out, it retraced for an FCR and it exploded, right? So use this chart to your advantage. And this is set up a different way. Like I said, it's an Uni Reiko 1120, 10 days back. Use it as say, the same as right click as our 5 sim Reiko that catches these order imbalances over here that cut all these beautiful trades. Just right click on it, go to templates, save as, name it any name you want, and then Set up a 1120. The reason I'm setting it up, I want these speed bars to pop. And I want these zones to pop. You got to be 10 days back though. It has to be 10 days back. And then also what you can do, you can use these, the outer edges. If you have an outer edge trade, right? Like here's an outer edge trade. If you come to an outer edge and let's say, we're in a downtrend and you hit the outer edge, you want to see a red speed bar. Red. That's an order and balance sell at the outer edge. And you'll see these big trades like this. 
right? So let's say we're in a downtrend all day and it has a real deep retracement come to the outer edge. If you see a big bar like that, it's typically a top or a bottom would be green. All right, so you can set that up. That's something that, uh, you know, I like the 12020 on the ES as a Rinko. The NASDAQ, I go wider. The NASDAQ, I go 125.25. Why? It's just too fast, right? I want to slow down. I want the NASDAQ to slow down. So I'll go a 125.25, one, a one and then I'll go a 1.125. One, one I'm sorry, I still use a 1.120. One, one sorry for the imbalance. But if I do this on the 25, I go to the NASDAQ futures. It's the same exact setup. You're going to look for the arrows of fire in the trade at the key zones. Same thing. Here's a tweezer. Tweezer. FZR. FZR. Momo. FZR. Momo. Now, the best trades you're going to get, and let me explain this to you, okay? The best combo you're going to get with a, if you want to use a 13, 113, 13 smaller chart, you can't trade FZRs off a small time frame. You're going to pull your hair out because it likes to W bottom, M top, do lazy bottoms, lazy Ws, lazy Ms. So a larger time frame allows you to get these nice looking arrows for continuations. However, if you see this off the larger time frame, if you're coming out of an FZR and the arrow fires and it starts moving away, immediately look for your 113.13 to fire a Momo trade. If it fires one off the large time frame, this market is possibly going to be explosive. You went from an FZR off the NASDAQ futures, off the 125.25, right into a Momo. This is the best combo you're going to get for a Momo setup. FZR right into Momo. They're even better with a Momo with a tweezer. FZR into Momo, right? Here's your FZR Momo, and here's your tweezer with the mo with the arrow. Extreme Momo arrow. So look at this. This is just perfect trading, man. You just can't. I mean, you're just smiling from ear to ear when you see stuff like this. There's your extreme Momo because we're what? We're above 80. So I went from an FZR. Momo. Now, what I don't like to see, I don't like to see this, a Momo first into an FCR. So, so let's say we get, we print there, right? Why don't I like this? Why don't I like the Momo first, then the FCR? Because you don't have a lot of punch, because you're not confirming a deep retracement. Look how this Momo doesn't have a big punch. Why? It's a Momo above, it's above, right? It's above 20, but it never got into an FZR, never got a deep retracement. They typically will go up, come down, and then explode. So what I like to do, I like to see an FZR into a Momo, into an extreme Momo. Okay? Uh, you can do that, but they work just as well with just green, uh, as long as you don't got overhead supply, they, they work just as well, Leo. You just want to be above the intermediate and the shallow zone. You get into the dead zone or down outside uh, by the outer edge, outer edge zone, price gets wacky and usually trend changes. That's when you want to try to avoid trades. As long, guys, listen, don't make this difficult. This is the intermediate zone right here. It's right here. As long as you stay above it, and you know you're going to break below it because it'll turn red, right? As long as I stay above it, so since right here on NASDAQ Futures, tweezer trade, tweezer, FZR, FZR, Momo, FZR, FZR, Momo, extreme Momo. See how that? As long as you don't get a red, red, here, Leo, you got to look for longs. Now, what I say today, we had a huge retracement on the market profile, right? It broke out and it started crumbling down. And we had a trend change. What did I say in the room? I said these exact words on the microphone. I said, look for a trend change back to the upside in direction of the HVA push. If you break out of HVA and LV on a market profile, you want to stay in the direction of that push with the zones. 
So if I break above HBA, which is green, here, if I'm outside of here, HBA, HBA, I just want to buy. I want to take no red zones, period. I'll just wait till it turns back up. So when it broke out at 1420, 1420 here, when it broke out at 14, where was it? 14, way back here, 1420, you do not take any red at all. You only look for buy zones. Don't worry about these. This is what's happening. They're trying to consolidate for a push back up. You want to wait it till it turns in the direction of the push. Very, very, very key. All right, or supply demand, you're good to go. Okay, so that's something that uh, that we need to uh, um, always address in the room is that stick to the side of the push. Yeah, as long as you're above the intermediate zone, you're buying. Yes. SDR trades can't happen until you get at the zone or inside the zone. And MOMO trades can't happen until you are outside of the zone. So you see how this works right here on the S&P at 1550 when the institutional traders usually come in? So that's an FZR right there, right? Loose FZR below 20, arrow fires, and it goes right into a MOMO. Above 20, arrow fires, right into a MOMO, right into a MOMO. Does that make sense? Because the push is up. You want to stay on the side of the, you always want to stay on the side of the zone. If it's green, stay on that side. If it's red, stay on that side. Only if you break out a market profile, I would always stay on the side of market profile break. That's how I like to do it. Okay? Now, let's go into uh, strategies. So, for strategies, let's look at a couple things. So, you're looking for the same thing on strategies. So, this is a longer term and this is a shorter term. So, here's a 120 20. There's the ES. So, this is a 120 20, right? But it's the same concept. Wherever your indicator arrows fire, the strategy is going to fire at those arrows. It's going to fire Momo trades. It's going to fire tweezer trades. See, look, watch. It'll fire tweezer trades, Momo trades, and also it will fire uh, FZR trades. FZR trades, Momo, and Momo tweezers. As long as an arrow fires, it's going to fire an arrow. I mean, it's going to fire a trade for you. Okay? Now, this is a 120.20. You don't have to look at a 12020. You can look at larger time frames. It's a larger time frame. Okay? Here's a larger one. So the push is up. The push is up starting at one. We broke out of all green at one, what, 50, 130. So this will fire off larger time frames. It will have an automated stop in there for you also. So if you just want a couple setups, right, if you want to look for just a couple setups, you can use this off larger time frames also. You don't have to use, you can select what time frame time frames you look at. We may have position traders that love to trade, position trades on FCR and Momo trades off of uh, the micros, right? You may want to trade these off just off micros. So that's an option available to you too, but the the um, the algo will look for those setups. It's going to look for an FCR, a Momo, and also a tweezer. All right. It doesn't matter if it's a large time frame or if it's a smaller time frame. It's going to look for those specific setups. Momo, FCRs. And that's what's going to try to fire you into. 
So you can adjust your profit target. You can adjust your stops. You can adjust uh, your trend filter. You can adjust all that stuff. Everything's adjustable. Your point target, you can trade off smaller time frames, larger time frames. You'll just have to adjust. Just know that you're going you're gonna to get more trend changes. You're going to get more trend changes with the algo than not based upon uh, um, you know, based upon smaller time frames. All right. So once we get this out to you on the algo, it will fire all momos, it'll fire all FCRs, and it'll fire all tweezer trades. Once we get it out to you, um, the indicator, you don't have to put the strategy on here. You can take the strategy off and just run the indicator. So if you want to just run the indicator and don't want the strategy on there, these arrows will fire automatically. These will fire automatically for you on every qualified trade. Okay? Yeah, the best thing to do uh, is this, Luz. The best thing to do is this. If you are green, if you are green zones, you're buying FZRs and Momo trades. If you're red zones, you're selling red FZRs in the zone and, and selling Momo trades. Then what you can do if you want to get add a filter on to only catch trades with speed, you wait for this chart to show you speed. Show you speed. And I got something like this in the algo already. There's something in the algo that I've got that cherry picks these trades, which I'll go over once I'm done programming all that stuff in for you. Okay. But those are the two sets you look for on a daily basis, FZR and Momos.